Hi, I'm Logan Crawford, and welcome to another edition of Footnote. If you think Alzheimer's disease only affects the very old, the author of today's book has some startling news for you. His name is Pat Muffet, and the name of his book is called Ice Cream in the Cupboard, the true story of early onset Alzheimer's disease. It's his own personal tale of learning that his wife was suffering from the mind deteriorating disease, even though she was only in her early 50s. But before we speak with Pat Moffitt about his book, let's learn more about Alzheimer's disease. Can you tell me what are some of the signs and symptoms, both early and later? Sure. Alzheimer's disease essentially affects one's cognitive skills. So we see initially a decline in individual's memory. Mm -hmm. People become forgetful. They have trouble recalling names. They become repetitious, asking the same question over and over again. It can also affect an individual's functional aspects, their daily living skills. So early on, an individual might have trouble with finances, paying their bills. Um, As the condition progresses, we see an increase in these symptoms. So the individual becomes quite forgetful. They may get lost in familiar surroundings. They may also have trouble with their driving skills, forgetting directions and getting lost. They may get into minor accidents. Um, As the individual progresses through the illness, this can also affect their personality and behavior. Really? So individuals can have sleep disturbances, anxiety, agitation. They may get out of touch with reality. And, and what about the age? What are, what are typical ages of people that start to get Alzheimer's? Sure. The most common form of dementia, it's the late onset Alzheimer's disease. Okay. So the onset usually occurs after age 60 to 65. Okay. The rare form of the disease is something known as early onset Alzheimer's disease, where unfortunately the condition presents much earlier. We have seen patients in their 40s or 50s really? where they start to present with the illness. And what percentage of those people have that? Ten percent. Ten percent. Right now, ten percent of individuals have the early onset form of the disease. So ninety percent, though, is the late, is the late onset. onset. So it's really the ten percent that could be a little tricky. Mm-hmm. Now, would you say that that's genetic? Yes, one percent. One percent of the folks with early onset Alzheimer's disease have a genetic predisposition, genetic mutations in specific genes. Now, would that come up on a blood test? Right now, we, have, we do have clinical tests for one specific gene mutation. So when we, suspecting, when we are suspecting early onset Alzheimer's, we can test for that specific gene mutation, yes. You can? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's really good to know that things mm-hmm. are really progressing in mm-hmm. genetics. Mm-hmm. Now, how about some of the treatments? Let's start to talk about sure, that. Sure, sure. As you know, there are currently no available treatments that can cure Alzheimer's disease. It's not curable at all. It's not all. curable. Okay. However, there are four available medications that have been approved by the FDA in the United States for the different stages of Alzheimer's disease. So currently there are three medications that work on a specific acetylcholine chemical in the brain and there's another medication which works on another neurotransmitter called glutamate. And what we find is that when we combine one of the three and the glutamate receptor antagonist, the two together work better. Really? What we expect to see in individuals who do respond to these medications, we hope to see that they'll have a symptom stabilization for at least nine months to two years. Okay. Now, I know this is more for people with the early onset, or was this for everybody? For everybody. This is for everybody. These have been approved for Alzheimer's disease. Great. So you could use it for both, late onset and early onset. And then how successful are these medications? For the most part, if you look at the scientific literature, 20 to 25 percent of individuals who go on these medications, we expect to see symptom stabilization. Okay, so there's a nice percentage there is. and there's hope uh, right. is really what that yes, equals. Absolutely. Dr. Shaw, thank you so much for being here today. I'm, I'm so happy to share this information with our guests. What You're an very important welcome. topic. The name of the book is Ice Cream in the Cupboard, a true story of early onset Alzheimer's. It's written by Pat Moffitt, and he is our guest here today on Footnote. Pat, let me ask you first. It's a very intriguing title. Where did you come up with the idea for Ice Cream in the uh, Cupboard? Well, after Carmen had been uh, showing these signs uh, uh, of Alzheimer's for a period of of, uh, maybe six months or so, um, we had gone food shopping. And uh, I was trying to get it to a doctor, and she refused to go. And uh, 
went food shopping, came back, and as women always like to put their own groceries away, she put the groceries away, and I went out and came back a little later, and I saw that there was this white liquid in the, uh, the pantry or the cupboard uh, kind of dripping down, and I opened it up and pushed all these canned goods aside, and there was a deflated box of uh, vanilla ice cream. And I said, honey, I said, you must have put the groceries away a little bit too fast today. I said, because uh, uh, you uh, put the ice cream in the cupboard. She said, I, I never... I never put the ice cream in the cupboard. I said, well, it's only me, you, and the dog. I, you know, it had to be you. And she said, you don't blame anything on those kids upstairs. Yeah. That's what your problem is. Because right. we had no kids upstairs. Our kids were long, grown, and gone. And uh, I knew at that point that whether she refused to see a doctor or not, this was the pivotal point of this entire event. And I needed help badly. So at that point, I named it ice cream in the cupboard is what, uh, where it came from. Okay. Carmen is your wife. You guys have been married for how long? Uh, 31 years. 31 years. And at age 53, she was diagnosed with early onset Alzheimer's? Correct. Had you ever heard of early onset Alzheimer's? Uh, no, not at all. I, I was just one of those people that thought, uh, uh, yeah, you, I know about Alzheimer's. You get it when you're 75 or so. And uh, so when, when things began to happen and the behavior changes, uh, I never identified with that at all. Right. When, you first, when she first started manifesting her problems, she was becoming forgetful, at times becoming violent. What did you think was wrong with your wife? Uh, I didn't really know. I, I thought some kind of a mental condition. Uh, I just, just couldn't put my finger on it. Uh, we had separated several years before that. Um, I thought, well, you know, maybe we've run the gamut again, and, and maybe it's time she would want to take a walk and end the marriage. That was the, the one that really stayed in my mind the most, just trying to get me to, get me to leave. So uh, just all kinds of things running through my head, but more mental things, nothing like an Alzheimer's sort of thing. And people around you were giving their diagnoses. They're saying she might have menopause or she might have um, psychosis. What, what yeah. were people telling you? Uh, vitamin B6 deficiency. And I said, oh, there, that, maybe that's it. So I went out and bought a bunch of that and gave her the vitamin B6, and that didn't seem to change anything. And somebody said, well, you know, vitamin B12, you know, uh, a deficiency in uh, vitamin B12 in women over 50 creates an irritable situation and some forgetfulness. Of course, it must be vitamin B12. That didn't work. And then we reached there where someone said, you know, menopause is right around Carmen's age. And I said, of course, the dreaded menopause. Women get very irritated. There is some memory loss with that, temporary memory loss. That must be it. So while I was doing all these pseudo-diagnoses, uh, you know, time was passing. And because I wasn't identifying this with Alzheimer's at all. Um, and, uh, you know, from, from that period, I, I knew I had to do something after that. And you've since learned that Alzheimer's can strike people who are very, very young. In fact, you've uh, worked with a family whose uh, loved one is just 36 years Correct. old. Correct, yeah. We have a couple of cases right out on Long Island uh, where, where two men uh, got it at 36 years old. There were several people in their early 40s. Uh, and, you know, I thought Carmen's age at 53 was some kind of a record. Hmm. And uh, it wasn't long after that diagnosis that I found out that it was far from a record. So these cases are very young, and, and that's what I like what Ice Cream in the Cupboard does. It raises this awareness around the country that these cases do exist, and, and a very fearful time for the caregiver, because with early onset cases, the caregivers themselves uh, can pass on before the patient. Uh, their conditions get very run down, their immune system starts to fall apart, uh, and, and they're uh, in, in a very difficult situation. Uh, so raising this around and understanding what those caregivers are going through is really what's coming out of this. Tell me a little bit about her symptoms. What was she doing that made you think that something was wrong with her mentally? Well, the, the first uh, incident, and, and it was a sign that I didn't know, but as a hindsight, I knew it, but at the time it happened, I didn't uh, relate it to Alzheimer's at all, was uh, in a uh, restaurant in Puerto Rico where we used to like to go, and, I, and we were bickering somewhat, and I said, you know, maybe we're just under too much work pressure, and let's get away for the weekend where we've gone before, and went down to our favorite restaurant, and we're sitting down having dinner, and I, I was just looking over the veranda at the Caribbean Sea. It was a beautiful evening. And I turned back to look toward Carmen, and we were having steak and lobster. And I turned back to look toward Carmen, and she picked up the entire plate of steak and lobster and hit me in the face with it. Oh. I fell out of the chair, hit the table behind us. Some people were picking me up. She ran out of the restaurant. I ran after her, covered with food bits and who knows what. And as I was running after her, police were following me. So just, what is this picture about? You know, this woman's running away from this guy. And uh, I finally got her calmed down a little bit and got into a taxi. And we got back to the hotel. I was just shaking from the whole incident. Uh, got back to the hotel. She laid down and went to sleep. 
I went out on the terrace and, and had a beer and tried to figure out what just happened to us. And about 10 or 15 minutes later, she walked out on the terrace and she said, Honey, I am starved. When are we going to eat? Wow. And I said, I tried that and you threw the food at me. She said, You know, you, you joke too much. That's your problem. That's not even something I would do, and that's not funny for you to joke at me like that. She had no recollection of the incident. We're talking to Pat Moffat. He is the author of the book Ice Cream in the Cupboard. And if you think that Alzheimer is a disease of uh, the very old only, you're mistaken. There is such a thing as the early onset of Alzheimer's, and that's what we're talking about on this edition of Footnote. Welcome back to Footnote. I'm your host, Logan Crawford. We're talking to Pat Moffitt. He is a man who's written a memoir, a story about his wife called Ice Cream in the Cupboard. It is a true story of early onset Alzheimer's disease. And Pat, before the break, we were talking about this violent episode with your wife uh, where she threw food at you and you had no idea what was going on. You must have been going through a lot of agony at this point, trying to figure out does my wife just hate me? Is she ill? Is she going crazy? Tell me what you were going through. It was, it was all of those things. And uh, a much more a difficult part of all of that was that I couldn't go to anybody else and explain to them what was going on. Um, the incident in Puerto Rico with the food throwing, uh, how can I explain to my kids that your mom hit me with a plate of food and I didn't do anything? And there was no arguing going on. It just seemed so bizarre. And people might even say to you, come on, you must yeah. have done something Stop bad. Stop joking around. Right. You must have been up to something. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yeah, so I lived, held all that stuff in. All right. But went through all the thoughts that you mentioned and all really right. it, was, it was a difficult time. Okay, so you're back from Puerto Rico now. Her condition progressively gets worse. Mm -hmm. Tell me what happens. Well, the, they were, you know, it, we started seeing more forgetfulness and um, more violence, glass of wine thrown in my face, and being punched and kicked uh, for one incident or another. Um, and uh, it had reached the point that uh, I knew I needed some help desperately. Um, but before I, I could even really get to that, Carmen refused to go to doctors, but before I could even get to that point, uh, the school system is where Carmen worked, and she was the budget administrator. So if there was some things going on in my own home, things had to be going on at the same time at the job. Right. So the, I ultimately found out that the, the budgets were done wrong. Uh, we had cases where um, a parent would call into the school and say, listen, don't put my child on the bus today. There's no one home. And, of course, they were talking to Carmen. And Carmen said, sure, fine, and then hung up the phone. Of course, that conversation no longer existed. The child was put on the bus. The bus went to the house, dropped the child off. Nobody's home. Call the police. And before you know it, everything starts to direct back to Carmen's desk at the school. Mm -hmm. So the school was really uh, uh, instrumental in, because they had to say to Carmen, listen, it, we, you need to take a, a test at the local hospital here uh, and, and see, because we think you're having some kind of a problem. And uh, uh, if you don't take this test, uh, we're going to have to let you go for cause because your work is just simply not up to par. It's not what it used to be. 